It was just another example of a life lost through knife crime and gang warfare. What is concerning is an increase with youth violence. When did you realise he was dead? There have been 11 kids killed on the streets of New South Wales in the past four years because of knife crime or the postcode wars. That phrase is, is one you might have heard before. Mark Murray, when was the first time you heard the phrase postcode wars? It was about 2018. Um, I was talking to a senior cop and he said, we've got some problems. In, it was in the northwest of Sydney. And I said, what do you mean? He said, oh, there's these groups of kids. And he said, they're getting really, really violent and, and they're fighting. And uh, I'd never heard of it before. And he said, yeah, it's the inner, inner west versus the outer west. And from that, it grew. And then we had a murder in uh, 2018 of uh, Tino Henry. CCTV from that night shows two rival groups armed with weapons clashing with each other in an underpass in Sydney's west. A 20-year-old named Tino Henry was stabbed in the brawl. He died within minutes. And that's really the first murder attributed to the postcode wars. Um, since then, there's just been so many. But um, that was the first time ever. I mean, I'd always known about gangs. Um, but they've, the, the level they've gone to now is what we're exploring and, you know, we've, we've spent quite a bit of time looking right into this. Mm. But, yeah, the violence that's out there on the streets now, it's just unheard of mm. in so, young people. Yeah, so Tino Henry was from the Inner West, as you said. He was associated with groups called 21 District and the Inner West Brotherhood and he died at Parramatta train station. The, the footage of that incident is, is mm. shocking. But what's more shocking, you'd know, is the rap song done afterwards. I've got friends looking at 10, you watch George get put in a box. Put in a box. So what happened in the aftermath of Tino's death was that one of the rival groups from Mount Druitt who were associated with the rap group 1-4, well 1-4 brought out a song which they called The Message. And in it they mentioned that after Tino's death, 21 District were down from 21 to 20. So they're essentially... I guess making fun of, yeah. of the kids' death and, and taunting their rivals at the same time. Twenty-one, what? But one got knocked. Ha! I yeah, guess that, that makes them twenty. And that's what I found really sickening. And that also brings into this huge debate going on now about the influence of rap and drill music on on the violence that's now happening in Sydney streets. I'm telling you now, I've covered I don't know how many gang wars where mm. big grown-up men do stupid things and shoot each other. Um, and that's bad. But here we have teenagers stabbing each other to death. And we, as I said, we've now got 11 in four years that we know of. Um, there'd be multiple ones seriously mm -hmm. injured. Um, I can't name you more than two or three. Whereas I remember there was a stabbing of a young schoolboy called Edward Lee in the 90s. Page one news for weeks mm. because it was so rare. We're so desensitised by by this, and then it's and then turned into songs. Yeah. Um, so I know that there's a really polarising view. All the young people say the rap doesn't hurt, doesn't influence it. I think it does. Mm. I think it gives it identity and pushes that culture. What do you you agreeing with that? Yeah. Well, it's something that we've looked at in length, isn't it? As part of this new documentary that we've got out at the minute at the Daily Telegraph, uh, The War, Young Blood really goes into knife crime, youth crime and, and what's influencing it. I think um, it's an interesting discussion around rap music because what, what we're seeing in the lyrics is so much violence. Um, we're seeing songs that are, that are talking about real life incidents that have happened like the Tino yes. Henry death. Uh, but the problem comes when you have adolescents who can't distinguish between what is simply a song and, and what is almost, a, I guess, a call to arms, if that's yeah. the way they see it. And so that's where the issue comes, and you have rappers who are defending it. I know we speak to um, one rapper, Big Cash, yeah. who, who says there's a difference between telling your story and, and egging on violence. And I think that's that's a, a really fair point. That the, the trouble is... and. This is where the issue comes as to who's to blame. But the trouble is that a lot of these kids can't tell the difference. Different, yeah. And so they're hearing these songs and, and they're using it as a, a call to arms and thinking that that's what you have to do if you want to get into music, if you want yeah. to have a reputation on the streets, you have to go out and, and commit crimes. Well, I know 
one four have a real problem mm -hmm. trying to do live music because Raptor the police are all over them yep. because they ring up the venues and say you're going to need super heavy security, you're going to need so many police, and mm -hmm. it's user pays a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So it makes it life very hard for them because they're worried there's going to be conflict at these, these concerts. So, and I know that they are even thinking of contacting some of the providers of these songs and trying to say they want certain songs banned, mm. which is censorship. And they don't want to do it easily, but the correlation between that, I think, is just undeniable. And, I'm, you know, and I, I think something's got to be done. Mm. But telling somebody that they can't sing a song is pretty, pretty radical, yes. and that's where the real problem lies, yeah. and it's getting the artist. What, what's the biggest thing that you've learnt out of us doing this uh, documentary and investigation? The big difference is what we're seeing now is, as you said, the knives, carrying knives. It's just, it's gone to a, a, a massive culture now where young guys are carrying knives on a regular basis. It's like packing your mobile phone to go out. They're taking a knife with them because they're saying, oh, they've got to defend themselves. Mm. But likewise, it, it, it's what adds and escalates conflict. So what I've seen is knives in youths, uh, in, which I'd never seen before. Someone carrying a knife just even 10 years ago was not a common thing. Mm. Here we have it really, whether they go out and got three days, got 50 knives mm. in one weekend here in Western Sydney. Yeah. So that's... That's the big, there's multiple multiple problems. All these um, joining gangs, getting territorial, and then you, they're not having a, a punch up. No. Someone's pulling a knife, which we saw at the Easter show. Two rival groups trade blows. <laughs> Knives on show at the Royal Easter show in a violent brawl that left a teenager dying on the ground. The most terrific thing I think Sydney's probably witnessed, to have a video at the Royal Easter show, which is for families, having a 17-year-old guy stabbed to death and videoed. Mm. And then it still took them months to get arrested because no one would give up anybody, yeah. teenagers. So it's the hardening criminal aspect of teenagers, both with knives and then the culture of not talking. Yeah. For me, for me, it is just how almost inescapable I think it is for a lot of kids. You know, they're getting into this when they're primary school age, which is, you know, an age where... I think most of us were starting to get into sports and, you know, playing footy, whatever it may be, and that was kind of our escape. For many of these kids, it seems, and, you know, I went out to, to Doonside and stood on the, the street with some, well, down a back alleyway with some kids yeah, who, sort of. who, who have been caught up in that. A week earlier, they said they'd been chased by a rival gang with machetes and knives, um, and, and it's just kind of what they grew up with. It, I don't think I'd like to go out to any of those areas late at night. No. Do, did you feel uncomfortable at all? No. Oh. Would you have been, felt uncomfortable on your own? Yeah, maybe on my own. Yeah. I mean, I think it was, you know, obviously we'd, um, we'd found those guys and they were... They were like, reasonable kids. They, yeah, they, they, they were good kids, you know. But the, but trouble, the trouble comes when, and we saw an incident where a bunch of kids got off the train at, at a train station wearing a school uniform from somewhere across town and there was a, you yeah. know, a, a gang sitting on the train, uh, train station platform, noticed the uniform wasn't local and, yeah. and went for them. And so that's, that's a danger, you know, like... Yeah. I said, a cop I spoke to who was in LA for a while, he was a New South mm -hmm. Wales cop for many years, he said, this just smells to him of the Bloods and the Crips, mm. which is what kicked off massive gang violence in the States. Yes. The forerunner. Yeah. And he's seen the same pattern here. And that's pretty scary. It is. Because that is what leads to, you know, machine guns, spraying, drive-bys. And if we're at the beginning of that, we've got a real problem. And it's not a police problem. You don't just say, oh, the coppers have got to fix it. It's got no. to start way early. As you say, primary school, you've got to stop them yeah. at primary school, getting to even thinking about joining gangs. And that's a real problem. Yeah, absolutely.